Hello and welcome to Power for Living. Church of God in Christ Sunday School Lesson 12 for August 18th, 2024. Part 2. Treasure in Clay Jars. Pages 92 to 95. For any who would look, the knowledge of God's glory could be seen in Christ's face, which reflected the light of God's glory. Now Christ the light, which pierced Paul's darkness of heart on the Damascus road, shone forth to pierce the darkness of any who would believe. Fragile Vessels 2 Corinthians 4 verses 7 to 11 In verse 7, Paul pointed out that God has chosen to use frail humans to accomplish his will. This is a striking juxtaposition flawed, fragile, and ugly pots holding the greatest treasure of all, the light and hope of the gospel. Because Paul had committed himself as a slave to Christ, he shared in his suffering. The various hardships and persecution he endured were a constant reminder of his human frailty and of God's power. Though he was jailed, beaten, and falsely accused, Paul's enemies were not able to destroy him. The Trials verses 7 to 11. Paul explained that the treasure, Greek word, the sorrows, they so are us, meaning the place in which good and precious things are collected and laid up, of this knowledge was entrusted to earthen Greek word. Ostrakinos, os os, meaning clay with a suggestion of frailty, vessels or human bodies made of dirt as another means for displaying the excellency Greek word. Hyperbole, hyperbole why, meaning beyond all measure of God's great power. Paul had become used to being a hunted man. Because of his witness for Christ, he constantly had to flee from one city to another for his own safety. CF Matthew 10 verse 23. Even now upon his return to Corinth and within the church he founded, he had accusers who questioned his motives. In the face of such treatment, one would be tempted toward discouragement, but Paul shared in four powerful statements his faith and trust in the supremacy of God's great power. Though, troubled Greek eord, plibo, tichilibo, meaning to press hard upon, Paul was not distressed. Though, perplexed Greek word, aporio, apiorio, meaning to be without resources or to be left wanting, he was not in despair. God had always provided for Paul's sustenance and well-being. His trials only served to reinforce his faith in Christ. Paul knew persecution, Greek word, dioko, diokeo, meaning to make to run or flee, to put to flight, firsthand, and had even been cast down, Greek word, katabalo, katabalo, meaning to throw to the ground, as though dead, but had been able to raise himself up and continue on, CF Acts 14 verses 19 to 20. He knew that God would never forsake Greek word, Egkatalipo and Katalalpa, meaning to leave in straits or helpless, him. Paul tried to help them understand that Christ's purpose on earth to redeem mankind involved a constant, dying Greek word, necrosis and nikaiarosis, meaning being put to death on the Lord's part. The Lord Jesus had constantly been the target of Jewish leadership who sought his earthly life. Even so, Christ spent his physical energies and spiritual strength in the service of those he came to save. Christ knew sleepless nights and emotional distress. In a sense, his death upon Calvary's cross was but the culmination of the dying process he had been experiencing until he reached Golgotha. Christ endured this gradual dying so that in his resurrection, his life could show forth in the bodily ministry of those who believed in him. Paul understood this gradual dying because he lived daily under the constant threat of death. He explained that like Christ, we who live and belong to Christ also experience a constant dying as we are delivered Greek word. Paradidomi, parad, idiomi, meaning to give over into the hands of, to death. This should not be surprising for the believer, for God the Father sees all those who believe in Christ as having died with him, CF 5.14. This he does for our sake, so that the life that is through Christ can be made manifest Greek word. Phaneru, phaneroo, meaning has made plain or evident in our mortal bodies for all the world to see. Such sacrifice is to the service of humanity and the glory of God. Question 1. 1a. Did Paul say, persecuted, 
but not forsaken, cast up but destroyed, yet not distressed. 1b. Why is the gospel hid to them that are lost? Not suffering in vain. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 12 to 15. Paul's willingness to suffer as a servant of Christ brought great benefit to the Christian believers at Corinth. He reminded them that his hardships were part of the cost he paid as a servant to bring the light of the gospel to them. Verse 12. Then, quoting from Psalm 116 verse 10, Paul said along with the psalmist that he was compelled to tell others what God had done for him. Paul was encouraged that his labor and suffering were not in vain. Many Corinthians had come to know Christ and the kingdom of God was advancing. More and more people were gaining salvation as the Corinthians shared their faith and, as a result, God was receiving glory. The Hope, verses 12 to 15. Paul's daily physical suffering and dying was to be seen for the benefit of the Corinthians. As he emulated the life and ministry of Christ, so they too were to emulate this example, Dali dying so that it might work to the benefit of life. Paul then reminded the Corinthians of the teaching of Psalm 116 verse 10. The writer of that psalm knew affliction, but that did not deter him from speaking. Paul wanted the Corinthian church to understand that to speak even in the midst of suffering and affliction was true evidence of having believed Greek word. Pistuo, pistuioo, meaning to trust in Jesus or God as able to aid either in obtaining or in doing something, and would serve to strengthen faith. Paul's encouragement to the Corinthians was for them to speak Greek word. Lalio, laliho, meaning to use words in order to declare. For Paul, everything found its purpose in the Lord Jesus. Like Jesus, Paul could know suffering and rejoice in it. Like Jesus, Paul could give his life in ministry and self-sacrifice. Because of Jesus, Paul believed that God would bring him and all other believers to newness of life. Death would have no hold. Life on earth, no matter how unpleasant, would have found a purpose that served humanity and also brought honor to God. In the end, Paul promised to the Corinthians that they would all be together in the presence of God. This Paul knew Greek word. I do, I do, meaning to be confident of. It is a confidence we also can share. Everything Christ accomplished and everything Paul sought to accomplish had one grand end, to bring glory to God. On the strength of the abundant grace bestowed upon him, even in the midst of his sufferings and trials, Paul gave thanks, believing that as a result, many others would also come to God. With thanksgiving Greek word, Eucharistia, Eucharistia, meaning gratitude, actively grateful to God as an act of worship. The worship and thanksgiving would then redound Greek eord, parasuo, parisesyoo, meaning to overflow, to the glory of God. Search the scriptures. Question 2. 2a. Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 14 remind us that the Lord will. 2b. Explain 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16. Bible application. Aim. Students will understand the importance of sharing the gospel of Christ with others, no matter the cost. Self-sacrifice and service to others are not very popular these days. People seek to please themselves and are willing to go to great lengths to satisfy their desires. As believers, we must reject self-absorption and accept our responsibility to put our own fleshly wants aside in order to serve others. When we receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, we accept the amazing gift of salvation, but with that gift comes responsibility to share the gospel of Christ with others, no matter the cost. The only way we are able to accomplish this is to allow His power to work in us, despite and even through our human weaknesses. Students' Responses AIM Students will list some of the trials they have in serving God. On a sheet of paper, list those things you see as your own personal weaknesses or disadvantages. Perhaps you have a physical disability. Perhaps you are out of work or don't own a vehicle. Maybe you struggle to control your temper. God wants to show himself powerful in the things you consider weak. Make a commitment to yourself and to God for him to work through you to reach others with the gospel, no matter your frailties or problems. Dig a little deeper. 
Paul gives the church in Corinth a tangible example of what it means to serve others with humility and to depend on the power of God rather than our own strength when he uses the imagery of a jar of clay to compare his temporal insignificance with the eternal significance of the message he bears, the gospel of Jesus Christ. One commentator says, an earthen jar is brittle. It depicts humanity and its weakness. The gospel is not a product of human genius or clever intellect, humanity and its strength. Yet it resides in men of clay. Another one adds, his information about the times in which Paul wrote by observing that from cooking utensils to toilets, jars of clay were part of everyday life during biblical times. The average person probably had multiple jars of clay because of their versatile use in the homes. They were common items that were made of the most basic material earth. During Old Testament times as well, clay jars were everyday household utensils and the work of the potter in shaping the worthless clay, emphasis added, provided the imagery the biblical writers and prophets used in describing God's creative relationship to human beings, Job 10 verses 8 to 9, Isaiah 45 verse 9. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul was a man of high position in human terms. He was unusually well-educated and accomplished, yet he cautions every believer not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith, Romans 12 verse 3. Clay was the most widely used material for ordinary purposes. It was cheap and readily available. Pottery or earthenware vessels were among the most common objects made in antiquity. Paul admonished believers to remember that they carried in them a treasure more important than they were as individuals and that their role as servants required what modern Christians might call a reality check. When tempted to consider themselves more important than the message they carried to the world through their service to others. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the treasure that you have given us in earthen vessels. We know that we are jars of clay and we carry your great power inside us through the Holy Ghost. We ask that you would give us power and boldness to share the gospel in spite of our trials. We ask that you help us to rely on you and not on ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening and to God be the glory.